I'm Neil, also known as The Hairy Man. And today I'm going to talk about these. This is the deck of animated uh, spells by Hit Point Press. It's, uh, sorry, got that wrong. It's the deck of many animated spells by Hit Point Press. And specifically, these are level one spells. This is something that I'm sure you'll have seen in, uh, sponsoring many other creators on YouTube who belong with their Kickstarter projects. Well, hopefully today I can offer you an unbiased review of the product and see if this is uh, something that's going to be good for you. This is just something that I've purchased and I'm not sponsored or influenced in any way. With that being said, let's get on to the review. From what information I can gather, the way the cards work is using a lenticular five frame animation. And, or to put it in plain English, when you tilt them, it moves. It's got something to do with physics and light and all of that other stuff that I didn't understand at school and I don't really understand now. So if you're a genius or you actually listened at school, uh, feel free to educate us all in the comments. Now, my previous experience with lenticular stuff had been cheap novelty items, the kind you get in boxes of cereal, where it was probably a two-frame animation. It looked fairly crude and the surface felt very rough and textured. And, well, I'm pleased to say that this isn't the case with these cards. And as you can see from uh, the uh, video animations and, and from this example here, now it's pretty clear and they look really cool. Also, you know, I've, I've, I've shown you off the uh, front of the deck, but if you, but I can show you some, uh, some other bits and pieces in, sort of like bits that appear in other parts of the video while I, I'm talking. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'll put on a longer showcase ace with the spells for the first level. So let's take a quick look at, uh, at how this deck is. So, deck has got 24 named spell cards with an anime with an animation on each of them um, uh, so uh, oh, for example here with uh, fog cloud out or expeditious retreat it it gives it some information on the some information on the front and, uh, and such as the casting time what range it is is the component components needed whether it's verbal semantic or material the duration and the level of the spell and what sc and school of magic it comes from plus there's other bits of information like if it can be cast as a ritual or it requires concentration now if you flip the card over you can see that much of the information is again repeated on the back along with the description of the spell and information such as any saving throw requirements and information about upcasting by using spell slots of a higher level to cast a spell. Also lists at the bottom which classes have access to the spell. The information, as far as I can see, is well laid out. It's clear and it's easy to read. Now the limitation of this set of spell cards over other licensed ones, and I'm talking about the ones that are produced by Gale Force 9 here, is that they're limited to the OGL, the Open Game Licence and they do include a very densely worded card that uh, lists all of the stuff that in all probability hit point press are legally required to include. This means that some of the cards are going to need to be renamed. So for example if I look through this we have the, the floating disc spell rather than tensor's floating disc and you'll have, have hideous laughter rather than Tasha's hideous laughter. Now, it might not seem a problem because the manufacturers are only allowed to use spells that are part of the open game license. So you won't be getting stuff that's included in other books, such as perhaps Xanathar's Guide to Everything. And so if you're a completist, then that could be an issue for you. However, don't fret because they have also included six blank cards like this one here that has a fairly generic animation that could be any number of spells on it. And on the back, you can see it's blank, so you can fill in the information yourself. So it's good if you've got a spell that isn't in the open game license, or you've got some homebrew stuff that you want to have a cool animated card for. Now, quality-wise, I'm very happy with the artwork and the style, but there was one thing in that uh, was a little bit off for me. 
Now the surface doesn't feel feel grainy, as I've said, I've felt with other lenticular products. Uh, so there is a slight texture to the cards, but it's only really noticeable if you run your fingernail down it. It uh, and sometimes you can see the text through the card in very bright light, but it's not that distracting. But to come to my gripe with uh, this particular set of cards, now I don't know if this is just the batch of cards that I purchased or whether it's a wider issue, but when I run my finger down the side of the cards, it's not noticeable along the top or at the corners, but uh, there's some rough spots which I assume may be where the blade that was, uh, that was used to cut, to cut them up from the master sheet may have been a bit dull. Because it looks like it's along along all of the cards in this particular deck. I mean, it's just a very slight thing. So let's move on to the price point of these cards. Now, I don't have any idea at all what the cost is to produce a five frame animation on each card to pay the artists it's for their time and talent, etc. But for this set of cards, your bank account will not thank you. I paid just over £27 retail for a deck with 30 animated cards in it, which is somewhere around 90 pence per card. And so I would put these as a luxury item for most RPG players, bearing in mind that you could pick up the entire player's handbook for about the same price on Amazon, and a set of class-based spell cards Oh, it's vary from 10 to about 16 pounds depending on how many uh, spells are available for that particular class. Now taking nothing away from the coolness of this product, I just think it's quite niche and something that it's not something that's a must buy. I think if most players were given a choice between picking up an entire level's worth of animated spells for 54 pounds because the spells are split between two decks, or grabbing a new supplement, maybe like Tasha's or the Candlekeep book. For less than that, most players or Dungeon Masters will probably opt for the book. But since we live in a society where we pay over three pounds for a cup of coffee, then luxury items like this will probably got their place. So, hope you enjoyed the video and it's given you some insight into this. I'm gonna leave you now with a uh, a uh, series of me tilting the cards back backwards and forwards so that you can see the animations. All right, take care and please feel free to like, subscribe or comment and I'll see you in the next video.